Hey everyone, so now that we're done with the arcade sequences in this game, well mostly uh, I said there's like going to be one last one at the almost at the very end of the game, but since we're otherwise done with the arcade sequences in, in, uh, in the start of the game, I wanted to take a moment to just talk about um, something which somebody mentioned uh, regarding the joust because there's so many problems with the joust. And I'm going to use some visual aids and today because I'm feeling extra old school as I always am. I'm going to start Windows 3.0. Remember Windows 3.0? Yeah, you had, you had games. It came with Reversi. This is before um, this is before Windows came with Minesweeper. Minesweeper first came with Windows 3.1. Windows 3.0 came with Solitaire and Reversi, which is basically Othello. And this is a game which I'm terrible at. I never figured out how to play this game properly. I mean, I understand the rules. I just don't have any good strategy for it. Anyway. Uh, so I, I, I'm hoping not to take too long because I know you want to see the game. You don't want to see me talking about other stuff. But uh, let me start Paintbrush here, as it was still called back then. I just want to uh, illustrate something briefly. Somebody mentioned uh, in the Joust with the Black Knight, somebody said that it seems to work better if you catch the Black Knight's lands not in the middle of your shield, but kind of on the rim of the shield. And when I thought about it, that kind of made sense. And I'll explain why. Um, I'll just talk a little bit about the, the physics of that. Uh, hopefully this is not too boring. If you imagine somebody's trying to punch you, suppose, imagine this is the line of somebody's fist coming towards you. So, you know, somebody is taking a swing at you, trying to punch you. And you want to block their punch. What do you do? Do you hold up your hand? Imagine this line is your hand. Do you hold up your hand like that and try to, you know, just flat, kind of perpendicular to the to the course of the punch and try to block it like that? You can do that, but this will hurt. If you catch the punch like that, this is going to hurt. You want to avoid doing that. What you actually want to do is not just block it at like a 90 degree angle like that, but the best thing to do is to kind of hold your hand at an angle like that. So what happens is you deflect, you don't really catch the punch, you kind of deflect it. So most of the force kind of gets deflected off and the person's fist will kind of go off, go off like that. So it will kind of bounce off you. Now this is obviously hard to do. I mean, this, I'm not saying this is easy to do. It, it takes a lot of practice to be able to do this. But this is basically how martial arts work. I mean, it, this, is, this is not just something I made up. This is actually how martial arts like karate and stuff like that, this is how they work. It's, it's basically all about playing the angles. You don't block people's punches, you deflect them so they kind of go off to the side and so you dodge most of the, the force of the attack. So it kind of makes sense actually because if you think about it, when you're jousting with a Black Knight, if you lose, like if you get defeated, what happens is not that the Black Knight's lance goes through you. It's not so much about blocking the lance. The problem is that Arthur gets knocked off his horse. And if you go back to what I had before, the problem is if you just like block something like this, if, if you imagine now this is Arthur's shield and he's just blocking something incoming, he's still taking the full force of that blow. He's still absorbing all the you know, the, the kinetic energy, the movement energy of whatever's coming at him. This is kind of like, um, it's kind of like being shot with a bulletproof vest on. I don't know, probably most of you have not <laughs> ever had that experience. I haven't either, but I've heard about it. I, I, anybody who has been shot while wearing a bulletproof vest can tell you it really hurts. It, it won't kill you maybe because the, the vest will prevent the bullet from going through you, but you still absorb all the, the force, all the kinetic energy, all the movement energy of that shot. And it can knock you down. Like it can, it can actually bowl you over and, and knock you to the ground if it's a powerful shot. So it's kind of like that. So I think what's happening here is uh, if you catch the, you know, if you catch the the Black Knight's lands right in the center of Arthur's shield, you're taking the full force of that hit, and it will throw Arthur off his horse. So it kind of makes sense, actually, when you think about it. If you say, okay, you don't want to hold the shield directly, you know, like right in the center, get catch the lands right in the center of the shield. You want to kind of angle the shield like this. And actually, ideally, like the really ideal thing to do if you can, this, this is easier said than done. I don't know if this is possible in the game, but in real life, what you actually kind of want to do is hold the shield 
a little bit off to the side like this. So when the lance comes at you, it actually goes past the shield. So at some point, the, the tip of the lance will actually have gone past your shield. And then what you do is you kind of jerk the shield like this. You kind of, I'm drawing an arrow to indicate, you kind of jerk the shield to the side. And then what that does is it kind of deflects the lance. So the lance kind of goes off like this and uh, it harmlessly you know, passes by you instead of hitting you. So it makes sense. From a physics perspective, it actually makes sense that you would kind of not want to catch the lens right in the center of the shield, but kind of catch it on the side to deflect it to the side. And like I was saying, somebody said it seems to work better in the game if you do it like this, but it doesn't seem to work consistently. So we're back to the idea that the, the jousting sequence just sucks. I'm convinced that the jousting sequence in Conquest of Camelot just sucks. But this is how the real world physics of jousting probably work. Don't just catch the lance right in the center of your shield, kind of deflect it with the side, kind of with the rim of your shield, kind of let it bounce off the side of your shield. That is probably the best way to do it to avoid getting knocked off your horse. So this was today's physics lesson. Let's go ahead and get back to the game now, shall we? So yeah, Conquests of Camelot. Sorry about that. I hope that wasn't too boring, but I did just want to discuss that because I thought it was an interesting little aside into the physics of jousting. All right, so where are we at? We want to restore a game, and I'll come back to the latest game in just a second, but um, just to respond to a couple of comments. Somebody did mention because, oh wait, not here. Uh, I want, yeah, gave sleeve. This is where I gave this sleeve to that witch. Um, when reading the runes here, somebody pointed out that obviously the missing word there is a riddle. I didn't think about that at the time, but obviously, yeah, to pass through the middle, you must ask for a riddle because you had the riddles with those stones that, that I had so much trouble with. All right, so that's, that's the answer to that. And somebody also said these uh, kind of stones here, yeah, this small stone is once a man, but will never be so again. So these... Uh, the game mentioned that uh, we cannot restore the witch's prior victims, and I didn't even realize these stones here had once been humans. That didn't really somehow didn't really strike me. But yeah, these when it says uh, it's it's a pity that you can't restore the previous victims of that witch. It's referring to these three people here. So uh, yeah, that explains that. So thank you to the viewer who uh, who explained that point to me as well, because I don't seem to catch stuff like this very well. Okay, so I think we're caught up, hopefully. I hope I didn't miss any other uh, comments that, uh, that I want to respond to. So let's go ahead and restore the latest game here. And yeah, so we are here and we're ready to leave. We're ready to leave Glastonbury Tour. And the next place we'll go to is... Um, where is it? It's in the east, isn't it? Yeah, up there. Otmore. These are real places, by the way. Um, there, there, like Glastonbury Tor actually is uh, a hill in England with uh, with some ruins on the top of it, and Otmore is actually kind of a, a boggy, swampy kind of place. Actually, it really looks like this. Really looks like four color CGA. It uses the same colors as a four color CGA palette. You have nearly reached the edge of the lake called Otmore. Through a gap in the bushes, you can catch a glimpse of a palace in the middle of the lake. Okay, I guess we need to go to the palace. I don't think we can go up here. Yeah, I think we can go up here. We need to go right once. And then... Um, yeah, Ridge of Ice runs even going any further in this direction. So we need to go up here. And now... Yeah. You're surrounded by what looks what looks like solid ice, but it could break beneath your feet at, at any moment. Ridges of ice have been thrust up in places. So um, I've heard a certain theory that um, that this uh, lake it's not it's not really a lake. It's more like a kind of a bog or a marsh or whatever. But I've heard a theory that it's frozen because of the curse on Camelot, because uh, you know because the, the the land of Camelot is is kind of dying, but um, I'm not a scientist, but I think, as far as I know, I think water freezes uh, below zero degrees Celsius, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think that maybe it's just that, you know, I mean, England does get cold in winter, so maybe it's just that... I actually don't know what time of year this is. 
It could just be that it's naturally frozen, though, couldn't it? I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, if you just go walking onto the onto the ice, then indeed it is no surprise that you die. Across the nice idea to tread, tis no surprise that you are dead. Yeah, it's not, that's hardly surprising. And by the way, if you come here with... Let me see, let me go back to a much earlier game. Um, like here, let me... If you try to go there with your horse... We can come this far with the horse, but the horse knows better than to walk upon thin ice. However, Arthur doesn't have that problem. Arthur does not know better, apparently. So, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So go to Otmore and we will walk up here. And I'll save here as thin ice. Now, what I'm not sure of is how you're supposed to know to do this. Um, so I mentioned earlier, uh, actually, if you... Um, when we were talking with Guinevere in her garden or whatever, um, there was a mention of the message of the rose. And I don't know how you're supposed to know that you're supposed to use it here. Let's see, can we ask Merlin about the ice? Yeah, no kidding, Merlin. Thanks a lot, buddy. I wasn't really wasn't I wasn't really asking about that. Okay, I don't know how you're supposed to know this, but uh, what you do or what you can do, what you're supposed to do, is recite the message of the rose here. And as I think I mentioned before, the message of the rose is, love is my shield. I don't know if there's some hint somewhere that you're supposed to do this, or if this is just like you're just somehow supposed to know. I don't know. But anyway, you don't even get a message, just this thing suddenly pops up. It's the whirlwind of rose petals, which will guide and protect you, but only if you stay within it. So yeah. And now we have this sequence here, which in my opinion is just a bit... Just a bit more protracted than it needs to be. You have to stay very close to this cloud of rose petals, this whirlwind of rose petals. And it's a little hard to do because... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay. Whoa. I actually started getting on thin ice there. I actually started get, getting some ice crackage happening there. I mean, it... it it looks easy at first. It looks like it should be easy to keep up with the with the with the rose petals, but they do sometimes, you know, have a little bit of an erratic course. And if you go just a little bit away from them, you can start to get some. As you saw, you can get some crackage happening there pretty quickly. I don't know if you actually need these rose petals. If you theoretically, if you know the way, I think you might be able to do this without the rose petals and just just take the take the safe path. Like just total trial and error, or if you just memorize the path so well, maybe you can just do it without, without, uh, without, uh, all right, here we go. All right, so we made it to the front. The petals disperse in an icy wind. You are no longer protected by its spell of guidance. All right. So where'd we end up? Having reached the towering palace of ice, I must caution you. In this cold manifestation, the lady of the lake may not be the benefactress you have known in the past. All right. Uh, so I'll save here as palace of ice. Let's quickly make sure. Am I forgetting anything? I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything that I need to do. I don't think that I need to do anything here. So yeah, it was really just that. Like there's no hidden sort of things that you do for points or anything like that. It's really just uh, just that. So, okay, uh, let's go ahead and go inside. Oh, the door opens without even having to type open door. Uh, hello? Okay. Here stands the Ice Maiden, a cold and unloving manifestation of the Lady of the Lake. Near her is Sir Launcelot, imprisoned in ice. Um, are you going to say anything? So just a little awkward here. Okay, talk. 
I sense that you possess something that belongs to me. Give it to me and I will tell you what even Merlin does not know. Where to search for the grail. Uh, okay. But if you withhold it, you will have neither help nor knowledge from me. Okay. Uh, can I approach the lady? Oh yeah, she doesn't. Okay, she doesn't mind me getting close to her. Okay, so what do you think this woman wants? Well, I guess it's not too difficult to imagine. She uh, she wants her crystal heart. I don't know if this is if this heart was stolen from her or whatever, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, by the way, does this scene remind you of anything? I mean, if you're like me, you probably saw this and right away thought. Oh, this this is totally like that scene from a different Sierra game, which came out not too long after this one. So this game came out in January of 1990. King's Quest V came out in November of the same year, less than a year later. So I think that they totally just stole the scene and reworked it a bit for that scene in King's Quest V, because you know it's it's the the logistics are exactly the same. You have the, the Ice Queen in the middle, you have the trapped prisoner on the right-hand side. I mean, we don't have the wolves, like there are no wolves at the bottom waiting to eat Arthur or anything like that. It's a little bit less dangerous, but uh, but yeah, I totally think that they, they just stole this scene for King's Quest V. Anyway, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and give the heart to the woman. Blessed be, for this greatest of all gifts, I will give you the gift of knowledge in return. To find the Grail, you must take ship to Gaza, then seek Jerusalem. Somewhere in that city it lies hidden. Once you leave here, I will transport you safely across the ice to continue your search. But Lancelot I will keep here, for he has spurned my love in favor of your queen. I will not release him unless you ask it. Um... Actually, I came here to free Lancelot. I mean, okay, thanks for the information about the Grail. I guess that's a good start, but... Uh, Hold on, let me save here. Gave Crystal Heart, just in case I mess up. Um, yeah, actually, ask it. No, seriously, like, ask for Lancelot. I came here to free Lancelot. I mean, it's not. thanks for the information about the Grail, but I came here to free Lancelot. You have but to leave, and I'll keep Lancelot here, far from Guinevere. I will not harm him, but you'll be free of him. Oh, I see. She's trying to sell it that way. She's trying to say, well, since he's uh, since he's cheating uh, with your uh, with your wife anyway, then I'll keep him here for you. So I'll kind of make him not your problem anymore. Nah, sorry, we can't do that. Can I hold on? This is an obvious. People keep telling me that I keep forgetting to kiss people. So let me try this now. Can I kiss? Actually, I don't, is she a queen? I don't know if she's a queen. I keep thinking she's Queen Isabella, but I don't know that this, she's not really a queen. She's a ice princess or whatever. Your lips would stick. Hug woman. She is frigidly disinterested. And let's do the old... Uh, oh, how colorful. Yes. All right. All right. Um, no, seriously. I want Lancelot. I'm not talking to you, Merlin. Ask woman to free Lancelot. You are a noble man, Pendragon. Which, by the way, is one of the uh, epithets of Arthur. Uh, he had many different names, I guess. But but we will see how true is your desire to save Lancelot when you're put to the test. Follow me. Uh, I wasn't really asking for a test. I really just want... When you're ready for the test, we shall begin. Uh, okay. I guess the test has to do with this tree here. Sure, be begin test. To free Lancelot, you must speak the language of the flowers. I will pose three riddles. You must give me the name of the, fl the flower that solves each riddle. The language of the flowers is the thought, of emo thought or emotion associated with each flower. If you know this, you may be able to choose correctly. If you fail even once, you will join Lancelot in a tomb of ice. But I will not force this upon you. Recite the message of the rose, and I will send you safely away, though Lancelot will not go free. But if you are determined to free your comrade-in-arms, look closely at the miraculous bush of flowers. And be warned, I didn't get to read that. Come, Pendrag, my patience is not without limit. If you will not look at the bush and take this test, I will send you from here. Yeah, yeah, look at the bush. I mean, I, I like looking at bushes, but I was not planning on... All right. All right, let the test begin. All right, here's the first rule. Remember, you must choose the flower that first... Th th that best answers it. All right. Um, when light is dim and courage fails, when heart against adversity rails, when it seems you'll never see the dawn, this alone can drive you on. Okay. 
So I guess hope or determination. So let's see. So oh, I don't use the mouse. Okay, so I use the arrow keys to choose between the different flowers. Now this is a kind of copy protection, I guess. I mean, you could probably brute force this not, without too much difficulty, but this is sort of like a like a, a form of light copy protection. So each flower here is associated with a particular emotion, and they're listed in the game's manual. So let me see here. What do we have? We have the forget-me-not, which is associated with true love. True love will follow you. Uh, Almond Blossom, which is associated with hope. That's probably the answer. Hope is what can drive us on in a case of despair or hopelessness. So yeah, so this is probably the answer. But let's see what else do we have here. Anemone, which is associated with withered hopes. So kind of the opposite. Yellow Lily, which is associated with... Um, wait, where's the yellow lily? Hold on. Oh, uh, lily, comma, yellow. Falsehood. Okay. Well, I guess falsehood could drive you on as well. If you believe a, a lie, maybe maybe the lie couldn't, could motivate you if it's the right kind of lie. But let's see. Daffodil. Death. Okay. Death probably doesn't motivate you in that situation. Poppy. Uh, red poppy associated with consolation. Hmm. Consolation, maybe also... Consolation, hope, yeah, both both might be... Okay. Sunflower is, is associated with haughtiness because we're such a haughty. Uh, cornflower is celibacy. Well, maybe, maybe celibacy motivates some. I'm, I'm pretty sure some people are motivated by celibacy. Chrysanthemum. So there's the chrysanthemum yellow and the chrysanthemum white. I guess this is a white chrysanthemum. Truth. Truth can also motivate people, I think, or at least their idea of truth. But Buttercup was a young woman who lived with Wesley. No, uh, it's, it's memories of childhood. Okay, uh, wow, that's, that's two Princess Bride references in one puzzle. It's pretty awesome. Um, no, I'm going to guess that the answer here is hope. So, Almond Blossom, right? Your wisdom is great. Here's the next riddle. Ah, oh, we got it right. Surrounded by giants, your worries were few. Wonders abounded, the world was new. Uh, surrounded by giants, I actually remember seeing this one. Uh, this is a reference to childhood because, you know, when you're a child, um, it's like you're surrounded by giants because everyone is so much taller than you, except other children. But, but yeah, it's, it's about memories of childhood, and that is associated with Buttercup. So, Buttercup, all right, your wisdom is great. Here's the next riddle. For its sweet sake, you suffer in silence. What we both most, most desire but will never possess. Um... You suffer in silence for what we will never possess. Um, hmm, not sure. Okay, probably not memories of childhood. So chrysanthemum, the white chrysanthemum was truth. Mm, maybe cornflower, celibacy. Is that kind of could be celibacy? Like saying. You know, like like you want it, like we both want it, but we'll never we'll never have it because we're celibate. Could be celibacy. Sunflower haughtiness, probably not. Doesn't really make sense to me. Red poppy consolation. Mm. Mm. Don't think so. Daffodil death. Anemone is withered hopes. Yellow lily is falsehood. And three me not was mm, true love. Um. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe celibacy seems... To, well, hold on, let me check. I think I have. Let me check. I, um... Oh, no, it's, uh, it, it is true love. Okay. The one about celibacy is about, uh, talks about priests and nuns, because, okay, well, it's obvious that priests and nuns are supposed to be celibate. Supposed to be, no, I, I think they're not always, but, uh, okay, all right, so it's true love. So true love, for true love, we suffer in silence. But what's that all that about, we'll never have it? Is that saying that, is she saying that true love doesn't exist, or is she just saying that Arthur will never have it because uh, because his wife's in love with Lancelot? I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's supposed to be forget-me-not, which is true love, so there we go. Truly you're worthy to be king. The test is ended. Lancelot shall go free. You are worthy of the great legends that will live on in your name. Come with me. I would like to come with you, madam. I shall return you to Camelot. 
I have freed Sir Lancelot and sent him back to Camelot, but your journey goes on. Farewell, King Arthur, and may you overcome every obstacle with the same wit and courage you have shown here. Wow. That woman is very... she's really businesslike. Lancelot didn't even get a word in. He didn't even get one line. He didn't even get to say, like, thanks, buddy, or see you around. He just, like, he was freed, and then, boom, he was gone. And the woman, there was no parting pleasantries. Well, actually, there, there were. I mean, she did wish us well. She wished us luck. So I guess, I guess that's all we needed. All right. That was that. We're done here at uh, Ott Moor. Went faster than I, uh, faster than I expected, actually. Let me go ahead and save the game here. Um, you can come here before going to Glastonbury tour, uh, but there's not really much point to do so. You can actually go to the to the Ice Queen's Palace and actually meet her before going up to Glastonbury tour, but there's no point because you won't have the heart, and so she won't free Lancelot anyway. So it's kind of like, well, what for? It's, it's kind of uh, kind of a uh, kind of a waste. Um, okay, so. This might actually be a good place to end the video, but uh, let, let me just go ahead and let me just go back a bit and show what happens if we. Um, let me show what happens if we. Uh, oh, you may you may not, pa you, may not pa pay you may not pass that way, Pendragon, unless I lead you. All right, S all right. So let's uh, ask woman to free. I just want to see what happens if I get one of the answers uh, wrong, or one of the one of the quiz questions wrong. I mean, I'm going to assume that she just says I won't free Lancelot, and that's it. Forget it. All right, so begin the test. All right, be warned, once you begin, you may not turn away from your fate. That's what I missed last time. All right, so once you start the test, you can't stop it. Okay, so look at the tree. I guess it was supposed to be a bush, but anyway. All right, if a dream is abandoned where purpose dies, these are left with the dregs of bitterness and sighs. So that's probably the, the failed hopes thing. But let me answer with, with something totally wrong, like a sunflower. You have failed. The price must be paid. Oh. Oh. As icy fingers seize your spine and coldness numbs your brain, you wish instead in battle hot you nobly had been slain. Alas, your ears are filled with ice, you hear not my sad refrain, a frozen statue of despair in winter's hard domain. I actually... I didn't realize she would kill us. I thought that she would just not set Lancelot free uh, and send us away and say I'm keeping Lancelot. I didn't realize she would kill us as well. Okay, well, that was the end of that game. Okay. There you go. That's what happens if you get the... if you don't pass the Queen's test. All right. I think we are done here in Britannia now, because all these other places the game won't let us go to. Oh so, yeah, all these other places, I think I tried them before. So yeah, we start in Camelot. You need to go to Glastonbury Tor to get the heart, and then you go, and of course, to free Gawain, and then you go to Otmore to free Lancelot, and that's it. We are done. Now we need to journey to Southampton. All right. Uh, let's see here. So we spoke with this chap before. Ah, uh, my lord, your return is most timely. I have five ships leaving port. They are sailing for Dublin, Rennes, Rome, Thessalonica, and Gaza. Kind of funny. I'm actually just realizing I've been to all those places in real life except Gaza. Would you care to book passage for one of them? By your own law, every man, even a king, must pay his way. I'll be pleased to answer any question you may have about them. All right, let's see. Um, let me just make sure. I think I asked this when I was here before, but just to make sure that I get all the points. We're supposed to ask this guy about Galahad. Hmm? Weren't we supposed to ask about Galahad? Um... Oh, spelled with one L. Ask about Galahad. Aye, he took ship from here to the far east. He said he had heard tales that made him believe he should seek the Grail in Jerusalem. Well, that seems to match up with what the um, what the Ice Queen was telling us. She also told us we need to go to Jerusalem. So, uh, all right, I think we know our destination. I guess we go to Gaza because that's the closest one to Jerusalem. Let's see. Uh, we're also supposed to ask this guy about destinations. Ask about destinations. The 
Conal, I don't know how to pronounce that, sails for Dublin, my lord, in the land of Ira, which is, of course, Ireland. The Frustrata will dock somewhere along the coast of Brittany to deliver supplies for the scholars of Rennes in the kingdom of the Franks. That's in northwestern France. I'm scared to press enter because I'm worried I'm going to skip the guys next. Yeah. The captain of the Remus seeks to reach Rome, but will stop in two Muslim-held ports, Malaga and Tunis, which are in uh, northern Africa. The Athenes sails for Thessalonica, seeking also to trade in Malaga and Tunis. Okay. Which is, of course, Greece. But I guess we'll want to go to the ship that's going to Gaza. A ship called Al-Uzza is bound for the Far East by way of Malaga, Tunis, and Alexandria, and if God wills, coming at last to distant Gaza. All right. Seems like that is our destination. All right. Uh, if you care to book passage on any of these, my lord, I will gladly help you. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's book a ship to Gaza. Uh, how much does it cost? Do you want to tell me a price there, sir? I'm going to assume that it's not, it's not name your own price. It's not like, all right, let's see. Let's give him a copper coin, see what he says. Begging my lord's pardon, but this is not enough for the port you have chosen. I will return your coin so you may count them out again. Well, how much does it cost? Dude, seriously. If it's not enough, then tell me how much it costs. Don't just say, oh, it's not enough and give the money back. Oh, man. All right. Uh, I guess you're... I guess it's supposed to cost three gold, so three gold coins. But I mean, why don't you tell me? Why don't you just tell me how much it costs? As fortune would have it, this ship is the very one you seek. Ignore the Greek name. It was sold by a Greek trader, and the new owner has yet to paint in the new name. May your journey be safe and swift, God willing. You may board now. All right. Thanks, sir. Uh, looks like we're the only person on the ship. Are we sailing alone? It looks like we're literally the only person on that ship. Also, it says Europe and the Middle East. Is that really the Middle East? That seems more like the Near East. Turkey and, and places like that. That's more the Near East. Weary days and nights march on. A storm catches the ship and you're forced to lend your strong back to something I didn't read. Huge waves cra crash across the decks. You barely save your mule, but your pack and nearly all your belongings are washed away. The next day, the captain thanks you for giving good advice. You are not a king in these lands, so do not be quick to draw your sword for you'll be surrounded by enemies. Be careful who you trust and never pay bribes with too much coin. You join the crew, ensuring several rounds of wine as they wait for the tide to change so they may enter Gaza port. The wine flows freely after such a long and arduous journey. Soon you fall into a very deep, dreamless sleep. Arthur, that's not very kingly, that's not very noble to be immoderate with your drink. Arthur? Arthur? Arthur, wake up! You slept through the entire docking and unloading of the ship. You indulged too heavily in foreign wine. If your head is pounding, blame no one but yourself. Well, it's not like I really had much choice, did I? The game did that for me. Sir, I am Hazem. My master sends his respects and invites you to accept his hospitality. My master... Okay, I'm just a bit leery about pressing enter. Ignore this boy. You are lucky he did not make off with your mule. I am Jabir ibn Hamid. I overheard some sailors say you need a guide through the desert to Jerusalem. Please, sir. My master is al Sirat, and he is very wise, and he asks... al Sirat is an impoverished old scholar of no use to anyone, but I, Jabir, know the desert. Every rock, wadi, and waterhole. Trust me in all things. Sir, I beg you to accept my master's hospitality. He heard of you from the captain of the ship, and he sends warning that the Muhtar of Gaza... Allow me to explain. The Muhtar is the man who governs this port. He hates all foreigners, and if he catches you here, he will throw you in prison. We should leave at once. I can take you to my master by secret ways, and al will, pr will protect and tell you... Get out of here, boy. We men have business together, and we have no need of chattering pests. Be off. Stranger, you will never survive the desert without my help. I ask for no payment now. When we reach Jerusalem safely, I will accept a fair payment. Hire me and I shall guide you to Jerusalem at once. Sir, I beg you, ask to see my master and all will be well. Okay, I guess this is decision time. 
but we'll have to make that decision next time. I'll go ahead and save here as in Gaza. And that will be that. This was a video of Conquest of Camelot, except we're not in Camelot anymore. We're a long way away from Britannia here in the, um, in the exotic uh, Orient now. So we'll explore this place next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will talk to you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye and ciao.